Alright, so let's start the class, please. Okay, so as you can see, today we are learning about geometric proof, but before we do that, there are the last three problems from the homework assignment from last time. Uh, these problems are actually kind of related to what we're doing next. Okay, so I want to go over these three problems before we go on to the next lesson. So everybody did their homework, right? Yes. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem right here. Okay, notice that we are given this angle is 54 degrees. We're given this angle is 96 degrees and we want to find X. Okay, now some of you would hopefully realize that if this angle is 96 degrees, then what's this angle here? 96. So can you find these angles? Sure, as a matter of fact, if you take, if you want to find this angle right here, you take 180 and do what? Divide by 2. Minus? Well, not divide by 2. Minus? If you want to find this angle right here, use it, you start with 180 degrees and do what? Minus. Okay? And in about two more steps, you can solve for x, right? Yeah. Who knows how to do it? Get it, Mike? Can anybody say they can do the next two steps and figure out how to solve for X? Get it, Wendy? You seem like you knew what you were doing. Can you show us how to solve for X? Come on up here, please. Okay, so starting from where I left off, what would be the next step? English, please. <laughs> it's okay to ask the class for college, but let's do it all in English. So let's see, you're saying, so 180 minus 96 would give you this angle here, which is 84. And this angle here you're calling theta, you're saying that it's what? Okay, and how do you know that? You're correct, by the way, but I mean, but how, can you tell us how you know that? Because this is important, because the next thing we're going to do is geometric proofs. So it's not enough just to say, okay, this angle is 54 degrees, but to actually give a reason for it. Does everybody realize that? Look, the arc, does everybody realize the arc goes from here to here? Yeah. Right. From here to here, right? right. So this angle subtended by this arc. This angle also subtended by the same arc, therefore these two angles are the same. That was one of the theorems from last time. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, good job. And here's the question 
everybody. What about this angle right here? And how do we know that? Well, no, no, there's no subtraction needed. I mean, I mean, we already know that x is 42 degrees. So how do we know that this angle is also 42 degrees? Right, which was the same reason how we knew that this angle was 54 degrees, right? Okay, so we're going to be using that theorem um, several times for the next lesson, so keep this in mind. So now, let's take a look at this one right here. This was the very last problem from the homework. Now, I'm kind of curious, how, how many of you thought this one was hard? Really? So everybody thought it was easy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well that's great. Okay, I kind of assumed that some of you would find this one to be a little challenging. Okay, well so let's go through it here. Okay, so we're only given this one angle of 65 degrees, and from that we want to somehow solve for x. Okay, so everybody said they could do this one pretty easily, right? Iris, can you show us how to do that one? Uh, yeah, this one, uh, part I. Now, when you're looking at problems like this, the best way to start is just to simply think about the theorems that we just learned. There's not that many of them, right? And you can quickly eliminate some of them as possibilities. For example, do we have any tangent lines involved? No. No, so we're obviously not going to use that. Okay? Now, we might consider that there are angles subtended by the same arc. That might come up. Um, notice that the center's here, so it doesn't look like we have any angles directly involving the central angle. So... There's not too many other options to consider. Okay, so think about that when we consider the solution here. Okay, oh wait, can you tell us what you did? Um, I used the theory of that angle subtending by distant arc, which means um, the, uh, this x is equal to this angle. Which angle? Uh, and I named it in my uh, test paper and it eight. Which angle is that? <laughs> you mean this angle? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can see that x is subtended by this arc, right? And we can say that this angle, so you know this angle right here is the same as x. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and then we know this angle is the right angle. Here, hold on a second. Let me draw it on here. So I can reach that. Okay, so that one's x. And go ahead. Which line? Okay, so we know that this is the diameter. Okay, so which angle is 90 degrees? Wait, show me which angle you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, that angle, okay. Okay, good. So keep talking. And then we can use, uh, we know that 65 and at the x equal to 90 degrees and we can find that. Alright, good job. Everybody say that. Now, some of these things that you've been relying on that you just kind of
kind of accepted without proof. Now we are actually going to learn how to prove some of these theorems, and then we're going to even consider some other problems that we can prove as well. For example, saying that, oh, well, we know this is 90 degrees because this is a diameter. How do we really know that's true? Okay, well, that's actually part of the next lesson, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, we're looking at geometric proofs now. Okay, so we want to learn how to understand some theorems about circles, and we want to be able to prove the circle theorems. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at this uh, circle theorem right here. The one that we were just talking about. So based on this figure, what is the size of angle P? Right. And so far, you would simply say, because of the semicircle theorem, right? But here's the question. How do we actually know that the circle theorem is true? Can we prove it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look. So how, how can I do that? 